the monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to an unorthodox edition of Titans All Access. I'm Mike Keith, joined remotely by Amy Wells. Amy, it is good to actually see you. Mike, it's good to see you too. I don't like this distance between us. It makes me a little sad, but it's good to finally see your face. But the good news is, even though we are observing social distancing and staying in our homes the way everybody should be doing right now, there's still football to talk about. The draft is next week. We've got things going on with the Tennessee Titans. It's so exciting. I think that is the best thing about this time right now is we can really hone in and be solely focused on the draft while all of this is a very strange new normal. I've kind of enjoyed being able to just sit back and fully dive into the draft. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that coming up later on this edition of Titans All Access when we'll be joined by John Robinson. We'll also give you a chance to see Mike Vrabel's appearance on the OTP last week, which was a tremendous amount of fun. Our buddy Lance Smith is back, and Lance will be introducing us to a Titans fan. We'll get to know him just a little bit better. But up first, let's take a look at something that happened before all of us had to stay in our homes. Take a look at how the Titans tried to make a difference right away in tornado relief. Once the storms passed in the uh, first part of the week, you know, we set out to, to try to figure out what we could do, uh, found an area that, that really needed help. The response was great from our organization, from our team, from our players. Let's come out here and lend a hand. You don't really know, you know what to do. You ask people what you need, and they need obviously water supply, storage bins. Um, they need to eat, and so you know, a lot of people volunteered, and I mean, this is our community, and this is a part of who we are. We all live here, and we want to we help out wherever we can. It doesn't matter what your title is in this world, no matter what you do. It's all about how you treat people, how you affect people in a positive way. Just seeing all the support, seeing all the different individuals, seeing all the different groups of people that's out here, just trying to help out. Uh, it's, it, it's just incredible, honestly, man. It's definitely Nashville strong. You know, this community, which is probably five or ten minutes from our facility, uh, where we go to work every single day, uh, to show them uh, that, that we care about them, that we love them, that we're here for them. Uh, Nashville is strong. Uh, we're together, and uh, we're going to help them rebuild. You yeah, to show these people that we care, that we love them, uh, it, it shows a lot, man. I think that's the first step that it's going to take to help rebuild this city. We're always very proud of what the Titans are doing in the community. And Amy Wells, you have a new feature. It's called Checking In with Amy Wells. It comes out via our social and digital platforms, what, twice a week. The first guest that you had on well, boy, he's a Titan pitching in in the community big time. Absolutely. I had the opportunity to talk with a former Titan who is now on the front lines trying to help everyone suffering from this virus in New England. Guys, you're going to want to stick around and check out my chat with Myron Roll. That's coming up next, so stick around. While the nation is adjusting to a new normal, many of us are taking some time to check in on our friends and family. And so here at the Tennessee Titans, we're doing the same thing, checking in with former Titans and members of the Titans family. Right now I'm joined by former Titan, current neurosurgery resident at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, Myron Roll. Dr. Roll, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. I know you're a really busy man, Tell me about how you're doing in the face of what I'm sure is a very chaotic time. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be back with the Titan family. Um, it's been a very hectic uh, experience at Mass General Hospital. We're one of the largest hospitals in uh, the New England area and even the, in the country. We've seen our hospital transform where each um, employee has to wear a mask as they walk into our hospital. Uh, no visitors are allowed anymore, so the, the hallways are bare. Our operating rooms have been either turned into ICUs or will be soon, and our elective cases have been canceled. Our neurosurgical floor has turned into a COVID-19 only floor, and there's this hospital within a hospital. The surge clinic will be taking patients off the street who have COVID-19 or analogous symptoms to try to triage and manage them correctly. So my day-to-day -day life of 
taking out brain tumors or doing things of that nature, spine disorders and peripheral nerve disease um, surgeries are sort of put on the back burner for now as we face this very, very difficult challenge with these COVID-19 patients. Now we've seen pictures of you walking around wearing your Tennessee Titans cap. Why is it so important for you to always be representing the two-tone blue? You know, I've read Tennessee uh, a lot, honestly, and I do wear that cap every day as I go into the hospital because it matters to me. I think this was a very great experience that I had in Nashville, Tennessee. My wife studied at Tennessee State University, so she's got some Nashville ties. My pastor, who I still talk to, is at Mount Zion in Nashville. Benny Fuller, David Thornton, Nate Washington, Ryan Mouton, and Derek Marks, you know, all my former teammates, Mike Griffin, we still talk. Uh, these are great guys, smart role, my cousin played for the Titans. I mean, I just feel like I'm intertwined with the community and hopefully they are with me. And uh, it matters to me because I know football has taken me a long way. Being drafted by Tennessee after having taken a year off, that meant a lot when Coach Fisher reached out to me. I talked to Marcus Robinson, my former DB coach. It was, it was a great step for me and it helped me fulfill a lifelong dream and it's propelled me into this next career. Uh, and uh, I'm enjoying it for sure. Now, I know you're a busy man, you've got a lot to get back to, but before you go, I want to ask you what message you have for Titans fans who might be watching this right now? Well, I would say, first of all, uh, thank you very much for, for your support uh, for the Tennessee Titans, and thank you for the support that you're giving to your local, adhere to social distancing and physical distancing, have lifestyle behavior modifications, get a little bit comfortable being uncomfortable for the time being. Sports will come back, our Titans will be back, we'll have a season at some point, it may not be as soon as some of us want, but it's important to put the priority as the health of the country instead of the convenience of having our sporting life back and, and our Titans back. So uh, we'll get there. We just got to be a little patient and we're doing all the best we can in the healthcare world to get us there. Myron Roll, thank you so much for spending some time with us and thank you for all that you do to help the people of Boston. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Hey guys, it's Jam Brown here. Hope everybody's doing well in the house, safe. Uh, hope everybody's practicing their social distancing. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's for our own good to protect ourselves and, and others. And just because we're stuck in the house doesn't mean we can't have fun. It's a lot of fun things to do in the house. Also, don't be afraid to go outside and get your exercise in the pool or in the backyard. You got some grass, kick around a soccer ball, work on, work on your skills. I've been working on my, my soccer skills. You know, I'm getting, I'm getting kind of good. Got the soccer ball on deck. I'm not playing around, I'm getting nice. But also would like to give a special shout out to all the medical professionals that are showing up to work each and every day to help, help people across the country. You guys, thank you so much for, for your sacrifice and, and your hard work. Titans fans, stay home, stay safe, and always tighten up, baby. Mike Keith and Amy Wells welcoming you back to Titans All Access, joined by a friend and a familiar face from Nissan Stadium. This is Lance Smith. Lance, welcome hey. to the show. Hey, 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 guys. Oh, man, I have missed you. I have missed you so much. I miss Nissan Stadium. I know everybody does. It's funny. It's not even football season, but we need it now more than ever. So on behalf of uh, all fans, thank you guys so much for the OTP and, uh, and all that you've been bringing us. Uh, the news and info that's just uh, it's keeping us uh, ready for the season. I can't wait. It's good to see you guys. I miss you. It's good to see you too, Lance. Now, you've been taking time to get to know fans during this period where we're all having to stay inside. Yeah, that's the thing about technology these days. It allows us to stay connected. And that's all I've been doing kind of off season is talking to everybody on social media. Um, you know, they need football. We need football. And like I said, you've been uh, – keeping everybody up to date with what's going on, keeping in tune with the Titans. And I just wanted to reach out to people all across the country and see what the Titans brand means to them, to see how the, the team pulls them out of the doldrum, so to speak, uh, and, and is getting everybody through this process. We've got the draft coming up. We've been making some changes in the offseason. Everybody's excited. But I really wanted to know what life is like for them personally. You know, what, what are their – titans room look like what, what about their memorabilia is it up on the fridge is their wife want to get them get rid of stuff i don't know uh i wanted to see uh how much love people have for the team across the country but especially there at home in nashville so talk to a few folks and uh, some you may remember i actually talked to this guy uh, tyler we know him as a titans kilt man and i just wanted to see uh what everybody is up to and how they're getting along and and how much they can't 
wait for the season to start. So right now, uh, here's my chat uh, digitally with my man, Tyler, Titans Kilt Man. Joined now by a diehard Titans fan. A lot of people know him from around the stadium. They know him as the Titans Kilt Man. I know him as Tyler. Tyler Roach, how are you, sir? I'm doing good, brother. How are you doing today? I'm great. Obvious question first, the kilt. Are you Scottish? Where's this come from? My heritage, I guess, is Scottish, Irish, and Welsh, and then English as well. So just a hodgepodge of the United Kingdom, essentially. You know, people dress up at the games and stuff like that, and some people go a little more hardcore than others, you know, and it's just kind of my way of dressing up and, and having a good time and enjoying the game and the experience all together. And, and people get a kick out of it. It's always a talking point. We went to the Kansas City game, and I actually met a guy there that was in a kilt as well, which was cool. Talk to me about uh, your Titan fan experience. How long have you been a season ticket holder? I've been a season ticket holder for, I guess, about three years now. My dad and my mother are original season PSL holders. The experience is awesome. You know, it's not just going to the football games and enjoying the games and stuff. It's, I enjoy being around the people, you know, we're all cheering for the Titans and I've gotten to know so many people over the years, even from being a kid on, you know, I remember, oh, he's like, oh, I remember you when you were a little kid and then I've got my little boy now and it's just, it's amazing the, uh, the relationships that you build just from seeing people literally eight times, you know, a year. Do you have a, a, a favorite Titan moment uh, there at Nissan or on the road? Like you said, you, you, you travel to Kansas City, I mean, those are big moments, and we travel to Kansas City, don't we? Oh my gosh, it was amazing. With my dad, of course, I've always enjoyed it, but with my wife now, I think it's even it's even more enjoyable because she loves the Titans just as much as I do. I know that's corny, but it's the first time I ever went to a playoff game, an AFC championship game. I mean, come on. It was amazing, and the experience there was, was, was wonderful. Good catching up with you, and I can't wait to see you at Nissan again, man. Thank you so much for, for everything, for being a fan, and for talking with me today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, man. And uh, be safe during the during the lockdown. And, uh, and and God bless. Yeah. Hey, and tighten up. Tighten up, baby. Well, Lance, that was awesome. And it's so good to hear from Titans fans, especially Titans fans in Nashville, and see how everyone's doing. Lance, it is so good to see you. Uh, it's great to see Even you Even digitally. Yes. <laughs> great to see you guys. Thank you, Lance Smith. We appreciate you joining us. Coming up on Titans All Access, John Robinson, the Titans general manager, joins us for his regular Titans All Access visit. But next, it's a visit to OTP Land, the official Titans podcast where Mike Vrabel and the fans took over last week. Stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kevin Byer here, chilling with the princess. She just had some breakfast. Uh, we just wanted to remind everybody to practice social distance at this time. Stay home, stay safe. Want to make sure we ensure the safety of everyone around us, uh, our loved ones, uh, anybody that's maybe vulnerable. To all the medical professionals, man, I just want to do a quick shout out to you guys. Thank you for all your sacrifice and everything that you've been uh, doing and helping us throughout this uh, extraordinary, unprecedented time right now. Uh, to all my Titans fans, man, just stay safe, uh, stay home, uh, and do what we can, man, to stop this thing, man. Tighten up. Amy Wells and I not only host Titans All Access, we also host the official Titans podcast, which the young people like to call the OTP, official. <laughs> we have a variety of guests, but one of my favorite things about the OTP is when we receive questions from OTP listeners who Amy calls the OT people. And Amy, tell people how they can submit these questions for us or our guests. Absolutely. I love it when the OT people get involved in the podcast. If you head over to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ, you can send all of your questions. We'll get them answered by the people who know the answers within the Tennessee Titans organization. And speaking of people who know the answers, we had Titans head coach Mike Vrabel on the podcast taking questions from the OT people. You've got to see this. Chaos ensued in the best possible way. How do you think the lack of face-to-face -face contact will affect the draft night process for you, John, and Ryan Cowden, your coaches, everybody associated? I don't think it will affect us in one way to, to find the best players for our football team and for this city. I think it will be unique, but I don't think it will affect um, the players that we bring in. Tyler from Hawaii asks, when you're evaluating a draft prospect, how significant is the level of competition in considering how draftable a player is? You know, it's very critical to me 
uh, to, to watch them against good competition. But then in the end of the day, you understand that there are a ton of players that come from smaller schools that weren't in a, a power five conference, let's say. And so then you have to go and, and do a little bit more digging, potentially work them out, potentially see them uh, move around and then try to have a vision for what that player may be on your football team. This is from Fain. He's 11 years old and he's in Flora, Illinois. And he says, coach, with the draft, do you draft by position need or best player? For the head coach, I, I try to look at what pieces we filled uh, in, in the off season through free agency. And, and you're certainly gonna have to um, take care of some needs throughout the draft. And then there's also times where you look up and you say, well, you just can't pass on this guy. He's the best player. So there's a combination of both um, because you have to fill out a roster. Matt from Wadsworth, Ohio. Back home. Yeah, he's from back home. What have you been binge watching during quarantine? Tape, you know, tape. And, uh, <laughs> but it, not, you know I mean? I, I will get uh, uh, Ozark. I finished Ozark. Fell into the trap of the Tiger King, unfortunately. The, every, you know, the kids were watching it. Jen was watching it. Kyle from Wichita, Kansas. If you had to pick one player on this year's roster to quarantine with, who would it be and why? Probably somebody who would be the quietest. <laughs> <laughs> Though not Taylor. So yeah. he's out. Taylor's out. <laughs> Probably somebody that doesn't use a whole lot of toilet paper. That would be, Ben Jones would probably be out. <laughs> Just a hunch. No. I, I love our team, Mike. You know, I'm going to have to be able to find ways to, to visit with these guys through the video conferencing and, and also with their coaches. You know, because that, that's why you coach. You know, I mean, you coach to help players and to make them better. And, you know, you, you have to be around them and, and you enjoy the the bond of, of this game, whether you're playing it or coaching. To subscribe to the official Titans podcast, go to TennesseeTitans.com slash podcast, or you can subscribe to the OTP anywhere you get your podcasts. We hope you will. John Robinson is the Titans general manager. He's the man to talk to about the draft, wouldn't you say, Amy? Yeah, I think he would be the, the main source of information. That's why he's next on Titans All Access. Amy Wells and I are now glad to welcome Titans General Manager John Robinson. John, it is great to see you again. Now, the room you're in right now, is that where you will be drafting from next week? You would be correct, Mike. This is Draft Central next weekend when we when we kick this thing off. John, how much technology did the Titans staff have to add to your home to get it ready for the draft? Yeah, there was, I mean, there's some cables that had to be run, some tests that needed to be um, run just to make sure that the, the speed and the Wi-Fi and the firewalls, stuff that people way smarter than me um, had to kind of delve into to make sure that, A, that the, that the internet was going to be secure so that, you know, none of our information would be out there for, for all the world to see, but it, that it was going to be usable and functional for me. So um, did a couple different tests with things, and, and we finally came up with something. Um, that we think that we think should work pretty good. Very obviously, the biggest change in the 2020 draft is that it will be done remotely. But obviously, preparation has changed too from the start. How have you had to vary how you have prepared up to this point to get ready for next week's draft? Yeah, well, it's been certainly uh, less face-to-face -face meetings, more of these type of, of, of sessions with the coaches and with the scouts. Um, and, and even the players, you know, when, when we shut the building down, we've, we've still had to connect with these players and get to know them and interview them. And, and the more I talk to uh, the players, I think there's some pretty good people in this in this draft class, too, that that would certainly fit in well with our, our locker room culture there in, here in Nashville. You talk about culture and you talk about the personalities of the people. You take the in-person interviews very seriously in this process. Do you think the lack of in-person interviews overall will change where some guys get drafted starting next Thursday night? Yeah, I mean, I think potentially so. I think there's a lot of stock that's going to be put into these um, these web conferences or FaceTimes or whatever virtual meetings that you've had with players. 
Um, but but the lack of, of sitting down and um, either going over an installation um, with whether it be the coach or just getting to know them personally um, on a one on one level, looking a guy in the eye, shaking their hand um, in their body language. Um, because a lot of these guys are at home too, and they've got stuff going on in their in their homes. We talked to a prospect the other day. We met his grandmother, awesome, sweet lady. Um, but you don't get that in the one-on-one -on -one interviews when they're at your facility. Let me throw a theory at you that's pretty common right now as people talk in the lead up to the draft. So, no in-person interviews, no pro days. Uh, you haven't had a chance to go out and spend a lot of time with these guys on their campuses. A lot of people think because of that, there is going to be a much bigger variation in what different teams think of players. And thus, draft weekend may be kind of wild in terms of where guys end up going. You think there's any validity to that? I don't I don't know. Uh, this is this is unprecedented. Obviously, um, we I've told all of the guys that, that we've talked to via um, uh, FaceTime or, or Zoom or Teams or whatever it may be that. Um, you guys are the only draft class in history that I know of, and you guys will be remembered as the only, hopefully, the only virtual draft class ever. So, um, but we're all, we're all dealing with the same thing. Uh, it's an even playing field, and uh, we'll do what's best for the Titans at the end of the day. Titans general manager John Robinson, thank you so much for joining us. You guys stay safe. Thank you. Tighten up. For John Robinson and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access, and we will see you next time.